A recent media survey of all audio, video, and film on the IU Bloomington campus turned up around half a million items, most cared for and stored properly for future generations. That changed when a group of archivists came across an unusual discovery in a campus building attic. It's a building people pass every day. No one knew an important part of IU's history was deteriorating up in the attic. Welcome again to the Indiana School of the Sky news program, It's Your World, a special news series presented each week at this time by authorities in journalism and radio at Indiana University. Franklin Hall near the sample gates is the site of an important discovery. Hundreds of rare lacquer discs are on the verge of being lost forever, and these archivists are in a race against time to preserve them. Lacquer Disc is a unique, one-of-a-kind recording. These are recordings largely of the Indiana School of the Sky from the 1940s and 1950s, which is, was an, a nationally famous radio program produced by IU, very important part of IU's history. And um, what we're trying to do is get these lacquers out of here. They're covered with dust and debris and dirt from the room. This, this room has been vandalized over the years and the discs were taken out of steel cabinets and scattered about. Only seven episodes originally survived. This rescue mission would digitally preserve 750 more. To think about what they were thinking about in 1949, 1950, uh, which are the dates that we're seeing on the labels, uh, things uh, about programs about our relationship with Japan five years after the end of the war. Uh, some of them are about atomic power, We've seen titles about racial tolerance. Today, a special feature on Russia, and also a recorded interview with Cornelia Otis Skinner, the famous actress and author who will give us some pointers on how to get along with all people. Yes, it's your world. From what we know, these are recordings that were broadcast to elementary and high school age kids in Indiana in the mid 20th century. And interesting for some of the topics to think about um, could these same kinds of programs be broadcast to schools today? A program on Darwin and evolution. Would uh, the university encounter difficulties putting forth programs like that into schools today compared to 1950? But before the content can be used, the discs must be restored. The process starts in the attic. Each disc is carefully cleaned and photographed for documentation, then moved out of the attic by the only way out, a ladder. Next, they are taken back to the archives of traditional music where they'll be loaded into the vault. Then it's a matter of trying to digitize them. It's a matter of trying to find resources to do this work. This is fairly expensive work to do. We were able to follow the digital preservation of one disc to see why the team needs funding to complete the project. This is marked with a red M and we think that this might mean that this was the master disc of this particular broadcast for the Indiana School of the Sky. So we start with a little bit of cleaning. A solvent is used to remove deposits that formed on the disc. After a rinse, the solution is worked into the grooves to remove the solvent. Another rinse completes the cleaning for this disc, but the process may be repeated a number of times depending on the condition of the disc. Then a disc drying device sucks all the solvent and rinse water off. This was a one-of-a-kind, made-by-hand record. So by looking through the scope, then I'm able to see the shape and the depth and the width of the groove. And that helps me select a stylus that has the best chance of playing this disc back properly. Then, the moment of truth. It's your world, the Indiana School of the Sky news program. There's, I think, a lot to be learned about the School of the Sky. It's a, a history that needs to be further explored based on what we know it was a model program for its time and very well respected. So it's exciting to find this much of that material. Uh, and it's, it's part of the wonderful legacy that IU has. Since the end of World War II, the world has been divided nearly in half, the Russian half and the Allied half. Although the Archives of Traditional Music has the most expertise with lacquer discs, they have not formally added the discs into their collection because many are out of their scope. It remains to be seen where the discs and the resulting files will ultimately reside.
They have just begun the process of gathering data to use in seeking funding to preserve the rest of the disks.